Hello everyone. Uh, today I will show you how to use ping tool inside the Cisco router. First, let's look at the design of this network that we have at hand. We have four routers, R1, R2, R3, and R4. They are connected as uh, it is shown on the diagram with the respective IP addresses using serial line. Uh, router R1 has a loopback interface, 172.16.100.100/16, and Router R4 has also Lubac interface 172.31.100.100/16. This is for emulating or simulating hosts on networks. So the first thing I'm going to access router R1, and from R1 I try to ping the Lubac interface on R4, and then we are going to use this to study or to see the various options which comes with ping tool under Cisco router. So the first thing here I will open the console of router R1. Now, just we have to mention something. For example, if I ping from R1, I ping the loopback interface of R2 in the user exec mode, for example, 172.31.100.100, this will work fine. But if I try to find other options that goes with ping, it doesn't work. So in user exec mode, ping is limited. You don't have access to all options. That's why you have to move to the enable mode or the privileged exec mode from where. You can also ping, you can do the same. But at the same time, you have more options available with ping. Just look at the use help and you will see the option. For example, first thing here, you can specify the pattern. For example, I can just write data and then specify um, the pattern of data that I would like to send with ICMP packet. So it will be like this. So this pattern, the data pattern is the one which is injected in each ICMP packet that I'm using to ping from router R1 to router R4. I can also use another option, for example, like DFB to check for fragmentation. If I don't want this packet to fragment at specific router interface due to limitation in terms of, uh, of packet size at that router, I will instruct the router to set the DFB to 1. Like that, the packet will not be fragmented. So I do that, for example. Well, well in this case, there is no there is no issue, there is no problem. But what about if I do this? For example, I can increase the size of the packet. So the size of the packet here is, I can control the size of the packet. For example, I send an ICMP packet of size 512 byte. Look what happens, it works fine. I also increase the size of ICMP packet to 1024. It works fine. Notice that the FBT is set to 1 here. It is set, so the packet should not be fragmented. What about now if I send a packet whose size is large? is larger than what it should be handled by the router interface of, uh, by the interface of router R2. So let's look at what happens in this case. 500 by. So same thing. Uh, what about 2000 byte? You see now it doesn't work. So the packet cannot be fragmented, so, and like this, this will not work. We can always try to figure out what will be the maximum size of an IP packet. For example, 1006, it doesn't work. 1520, it doesn't work. 500, right? Let's increase. 1510, no. Uh, zero 04, same thing. Zero 01, no. So the maximum is here, the packet is 1500 byte. Beyond that, the packet should be fragmented. And since we are not allowing this by setting the DF bit to 1 in the header of IP uh, packet, so the packet will not be fragmented. Beside that, we can use other options like, uh, <coughs> for example, repeat. How many times would you like to send? ICMP request and expect to receive ICMP reply. So the default is 5. On Cisco routers, default is 5. So I can increase this to 100. So now I'm controlling the number of time I'm receiving replies following requests. So 100 replies following 100 requests. Uh, I can do the same thing, for example, I can do other things which consist of specifying the source IP address. Knowing that I'm pinging from R1, so the source IP address will be the IP address of serial. 1 slash 0. 
all the backups leaving Route Route 1 will have a source IP address, IP address of the serial interface. What about if I want to change the serial IP address? Or the, uh, sorry, what about if I want to change the source IP address? So instead of the IP address assigned to the serial interface, I would like the source IP address of all packets, ICIP packets leaving Route Route 1 to be the IP address assigned to loopback interface 0. So for that, it's very easy. I just come here, ping, specify target IP address, and then specify the source. Now the source here, I can specify the interface, loopback 0. So like this now, the source IP address of all ICMP packets, of all um, outgoing ICMP packet, will be 172.16.100.100, which is the IP address of loopback 0. I can also use other options like um, Let's look, let's find what other options are available. Timeout. Timeout, it means that the default timeout used in Cisco router is two seconds. It means that when I ping to a target and I don't receive a, re uh, a reply within a time window of two seconds, the time, the uh, ping will timeout. The ping will timeout. So now I might reduce the timeout to one second, which means that if I don't receive reply within a time window of one second, ping with timeout. Of course, we're sending five ICMP code requests for each one of the five ICMP code requests we're expecting to receive an ICMP code reply. So for each ICMP code request, the, the time window is the, uh, one second. If I don't receive the reply within that one second, there will be timeout for that particular ICMP echo request. Uh, the other thing I can try here is to use another option, validate. validate. So I'm going to validate each reply as a response to a request. So we can also validate to make sure that this reply is not forged reply. Well, these are the various options that come with ping and their privileged mode. But we can have also the extended ping. Actually, the extended ping again uh, is a feature which is available when you type ping only and then you press enter. Now it doesn't work in the user exec mode. In the user exec mode, you cannot, you don't have access to extended ping. In order to use extended ping, you have to be uh, in the privileged mode. So in the privileged mode, you type the command ping. Oh, let me just let me just reset the terminal. It's better like this. And then I type ping. And that is going to ask me which protocol I'm going to use, IP or IPv6. Or Now, the protocol used here is IP protocol. The target IP address will be our destination, 172.31.100.100, which is on router uh, R4 here. Um, now, repeat count. How many times I'm going to send ICMP request? So let's make it 20, right? The datagram size, I can also control the size of datagram. I, I'm going to make it 256 bytes. Timeout in second, I leave it. I leave the default, which is two seconds. Extended commands, no, I just use this. And sweep range, so I can try the various size. I can sweep the size, the range of size. For example, I say, okay, all ICMP packets will start from 250 bytes, the starting. I say yes first, and then the minimum size will be 250 bytes. Maximum size will be 256, which is the maximum datagram size uh, that I specified previously. So I was going to send ICMP request with this size, 250, and then it finished sending ICMP packet with this maximum size that I specify here, which is 256. But be careful here, you have to specify the sweep interval. Do you want it to go one by one? For example, it will try ICMP packet of size 250 bytes and then 251, 252, 253, 54, 55, 56. It will move by step of one. Or you can speed up the process and ask it, for example, to move with a sweep interval of two or three or whatever. So we can try, for example, interval uh, three. We can make it three. So like this, it will start with minimum size 250. After that, it moves to 50, 51, 52, and then 53, 54, 55. All right. OK. So how many times? If we count number of replies, 
So you're going to find that uh, we have three sets of replies. So it like it's like it has it has checked for three different values of ICMP size. Okay, so this concerns the sweeping the size of ICMP packets used to ping a specific target. Now, in some other situations, uh, I can use extended ping like this, specify the target, which is 172.31.100.100, repeat count, I put 10, datagram size 100, I leave the default, timeout in second default, extended command, yes. I would like to use extended feature. Now the source IP address or interface will be loopback zero. Uh, well, I should write loop loopback. Sorry, loopback zero. Now the type of service I can leave it zero, or I can change it to whichever value I need to use. Set the FBT and IP header. No, I can leave it to the default, but you can change it if you want. Validate reply. No, no need for that now. Data pattern, I can change it. Now, do you want this packet to be sent using this uh, options? Lose, lose, strict, record, timestamps, variables. Lose, it means that the packet will send ICMP requests. And if, you, if you specify this option, lose, it means you're going to, to give one or many IP addresses. So the packet should go through each IP address that you are specifying that you are specifying in the path to the destination. Strict here, you have to define the complete path between the source and the destination. So the complete path should be defined and the packet should abide by that path. I mean, if you want to send the packet to the destination and you specify, for example, router A, B, C, D, and E, so your packet should go through these routers that you specified. There is no other way. It's different from loose. In this situation, if you specify to your, to, to your packet to go through router A, router C, yes, the packet. But in between, the packet might choose a different path every time. So there is no need uh, for the packet to abide by a specific path each time you send it to a destination, except those IP addresses that you are uh, specifying. Record, record here, it acts as a trace route. But the difference with record is that it will not only record the IP address of routers between the source to destination, but it will also record the IP address between the source, between the destination and the source. So it will be like giving you exactly the path uh, when you send the ICMP packet and the path when you receive the, your ICMP echo reply packet. This is quite interesting feature. So for example, let's choose here record. I put R. And timestamp, sorry, for timestamps. So every time ICMP packet will reach a router, the router will, will timestamp it. We'll put a time on the, in the header, in the option field of the header of the IP packet. So like that, you know exactly the uh, round trip time between you and any intermediate node to the destination. So you can use this feature, but make sure that when you use this uh, option to synchronize your routers, for example, you can use NTP protocol for general synchronization, such that every router will put the right or the correct timestamps with respect to the clock of the sending router. So in our case, let's look at the record, how it works. I'm going to record number of hops, let's put nine, okay. So, right, no, okay. So now you see, the uh, first IP address it will see is 192.168.0.1, this one. This is the first IP address. Now the second IP address is 192.168.1.1, which is this IP address. The third IP address will be 192.168.3.2, this IP address and IP address 172.31.100.100 which is the target IP address and then 192.168.3.1 this one .1 192.168.1.2 
this one 192.168.0.2 this one here and finally the source of the traffic 172.16.100.100 so how you should read it you should start from uh, the bottom of the list so this is the IP address 192.168.0.2 and the next router is 192.168.1.2 the third router is 192.168.3.1 so these are the routers okay and then this is the target and back which is to to r3 throw the ip address 192.168.3.2 which is here and then back to r2 192.168.1.1 which is here and then finally 192.168.0.1 which is this IP address so if you want to read the uh, output of the record uh, make sure you start from the bottom of the list in order to make things clear uh, how to uh, int interpret the path through which the packet was sent and the reply to the packet and the path through which the reply was was forwarded okay so this is a very interesting feature that you can obtain with the extended command with extended ping uh, this is Hakim Adish thank you for viewing this video bye